The infamous 16 valve 1.6 liter motor swap for the Suzuki Samurai. This is how I did mine. So if you're thinking about motor swapping your Suzuki Samurai for a 16 valve or an 8 valve Suzuki Psykick engine, Hopefully this video can help you prepare and give you a good idea of what you can expect. Quick disclaimer, I'm not an expert, I'm not claiming to be an expert, and I'm also not saying this is the best, only way to modify your car. You do whatever suits your fancy and your style, and I hope it works out for you. The specific motor that I went with is the G16B, I believe, and that is the 1.6 liter 16 valve motor out of a 1996 Sidekick. It was a OBD2 car and I had the wiring harness converted to OBD1 specifications by Petroworks in Fallbrook, California. So if you're debating a motor swap and you're asking yourself why, why should you? Um, it's probably because you're in the slow lane in third gear trying to make it up over that hill. Stock Suzuki Samurai, I think it's rated between 60 and 70 horsepower from the factory. The 16 valve Suzuki Sidekick motors are rated right around 100 horsepower from the factory and around 100 foot pounds of torque. So I wanted a decent little horsepower upgrade. I wanted to be able to keep up with traffic, and now it does. The second reason why I wanted to do a motor swap was because my original 1.3 liter Samurai engine was pretty much toast. It had been overheating for a while, and after replacing the water pump, timing belt, radiator, basically every heating and cooling component besides the head gasket, it was still overheating. And not to mention it was leaking oil out of just about every seal. So rather than put a couple hundred dollars into my car, I figured the only logical thing was to put a couple thousand dollars into my car to make it right. So why did I go with the 16 valve specifically? If I was gonna do the swap, I wanted to go with the highest rated output option there was. A lot of people do the eight valve swap and I think that's awesome. It seems like a solid upgrade, um, but I just wanted to do the 16 valve if I was gonna do it. There's other swaps out there that seem super cool like the Volkswagen TDI and the Aero 2.0. To me, those seemed like they were gonna require a little bit more troubleshooting, modifying, and figuring things out. All those things probably would have held me up and I was gonna need some help getting through there. So I wanted to go with something that was close to factory form, but still a nice upgrade. And this car isn't carb legal in California, but there are ways to get these things carb legal in California if that's where you are. You do whatever suits your budget and your style best. All right, so what is involved and what do you need? First, you need a donor engine. So I found my 16 valve right here from Steve at Sidetracked Parts. He basically delivered a whole Suzuki Sidekick donor car to my house. I pulled the engine and transmission out and everything I needed, wiring harness, computer, and then I gave him back the car and the transmission and everything I didn't need. I'll put his info in here and you can give him a call. He might have what you're looking for. This motor specifically, when I looked at it for the first time, it was making some noise while it was still in the donor car. I was a little skeptical about it because of the weird noise we were hearing. Uh, we took it to an expert and of course the noise was gone. Uh, come to find out later, I took the valve cover off and there was a valve rocker arm broken off inside the head. Long story short, we ended up rebuilding the whole 16 valve motor. It was rebuilt by John Johnson in Fallbrook, California and he did an awesome job putting this thing together. You do got to be a little bit careful on the 16 valves. I've heard they have uh, cracking issues with the block because they can get real hot and it's an aluminum block. I would say it's best to go look at a running motor first if it's in a running car. So just be mindful when you're getting yourself a used motor. From there, you got to prep it for installation. So you can take it as far as you want to go. You can just slap it right in your car right away. You can do some seals, gaskets, all the maintenance. All this stuff's going to be easier when the motor's out of the car. There are a few companies out there that offer kits and adapter plates and motor mounts that'll help the 16 valve fit nice and snug into your stock engine bay. I use pretty much everything that Petroworks has to offer for the 16 valve swap. I got my motor mounts from Petroworks. Apparently they help the 16 valve sit slightly lower. I haven't noticed any issues of rubbing on my hood or on you know, the high points of my engine. So I'm happy with those motor mounts. So there's a transmission bracket, adapter plate. I used the stock Suzuki Samurai flywheel and a Samurai clutch. You are also gonna need to modify the wiring harness. Petroworks does that as well. And there, uh, there are a couple guys out there that'll do that. I think Trail Tough also does that, maybe Zuxa Hazard. Um, basically you can send them your whole wiring harness off of a Suzuki Sidekick. They'll take out what you don't need and include what you do need. And it'll be pretty much plug and play from there. There were a couple wires I still had to connect. I think it was like nine or so with my modified wiring harness. There's also a gauge cluster modification that they can do. My tachometer kind of works. My temperature gauge kind of works and my fuel gauge also kind of works. I don't really trust any of those things entirely. I kind of want to change that part up but for now it works and it gives me enough info to uh, hope I'm not going to blow the car up. They also add in this little sheet here at the bottom of your gauge cluster that replaces the old one. You are also going to need a good ECM or ECU or computer whatever you want to call it. Um, I've got mine mounted right there 
and the wires go through the firewall. I also upgraded to an aluminum radiator and Doug Thorley headers. Headers connect to kind of a stock style exhaust out the back. You're gonna to need to add a second fuel pump, an inline fuel pump. Um, I think mine is out of a 80s F-150. There are some write-ups online about the best fuel pump and fuel tank to run for the 16 valve. Um, but so far I have about 4,000 miles on my 16 valve and my F-150 fuel pump, and so far so good. So in order to install one of these in your car, if you have one, or you're gonna get one, you're gonna need an engine hoist, you're gonna need a little bit of space. All right, so I'm getting ready to drop the 1.6 liter engine into my Samurai. So here is the remanufactured transmission. There's the flywheel. And here is the 1.6 16 valve out of a 1996 Suzuki Sidekick. Full rebuild, head, bottom, mounted up. Petroworks adapter plate. It's gonna go in there. So it is 11 o'clock at night. Let's see how long this takes. Let's make it happen. That is a wrap. It is 12.30, took me one hour and 30 minutes. These motor mounts were not fun to get in. I decided not to listen to the instructions and did it opposite, and it was a bitch. But she's in there, she looks happy. So how much does a 16 valve swap cost for a Suzuki Samurai? But a lot of it is up to you and kind of the situation at hand. You might find a good deal on a motor. If you do a lot of the work by yourself, you're gonna save yourself a lot of money. If you have a shop do some of the work, it's gonna cost you a little bit more money, but it'll be done and you don't have to worry about it. You can break your engine down and do a full rebuild or you can just slap it in and hope for the best and go for it. So here's what I did. You can skip some of these steps or you can do more steps to make it right. Level of difficulty, I would say most of the swap was pretty easy. Um, a lot of it is just unbolting things and bolting things back together, like taking the old engine and drivetrain out and putting the new one kind of together. The motor mounts were a little bit tough to get in. I think it took me a couple extra minutes. Follow the instructions if you get the Petroworks ones because they say to do it in a certain order with the bolts and the sides. And once I did it right and followed the instructions, it was a breeze. One other thing you gotta make sure you do right is the adapter plate. Make sure you bolt everything together in the correct sequence and everything goes in the right spot. I would say the most difficult part about it is gonna be the wiring harness. And that's just because you're actually having to modify something. Everything else is plug and play. Uh, there's a couple wires you're gonna to have to splice in and, and do a little bit of configuring. If you're tech savvy and you know kind of your way around a car, it's probably gonna be no problem for you. If you struggle with wiring like I do or you're colorblind, you might run into a little bit of a hiccup there. That's probably the most technical part of this project, but if you have someone do a lot of the modifying for you, like Petroworks, it should be as plug and play as you can get. So that'll definitely make the process easier for you, but it is doable to do it all by yourself if you're into that. I know a lot of Samurai owners are super duper smart, and if you're one of those guys, everything should be a breeze and you'll have it together in no time. But if you haven't done a ton of stuff like this, give yourself twice as much time as you need and twice as much budget as you think you need. The main thing you're probably asking yourself now is, is it worth it? And that is a very good question. So when I first finished my 16 valve swap in this Samurai, my initial response was, it's not that fast. It doesn't feel like it has that much power. And that's because it doesn't. Really, you're going from about 60, 70 horsepower to 100. In reality, that's not that much power. I've been driving a couple other cars that are a little bit more sports car oriented, so I lost the true feeling of the Samurai. And actually, since finishing the swap, I still haven't driven a stock Samurai, so I don't really have a solid comparison at this moment of one versus the other, but I'm gonna have that soon. Uh, don't you worry, and that'll be another video. Another reason was when I finished my swap, I actually had a check engine light for an EGR code. Um, with Petroworks kit, there is a little plug port that you can run diagnostics. It was like a weird sensor or something. I don't really remember, 
Um, but after clearing that code, it's been running much, much better. And it feels like it has more power. Now that I've kind of gotten used to it, I've put about 4,000 miles on the car. Uh, I'm really liking it. I'm really enjoying it. It cruises on the freeway, no problem. It keeps up with traffic speed, no problem. I'm passing people in the fast lane sometimes. I will admit there are still times when I have to downshift into fourth on the freeway going up a big hill. Um, but that's the reality of driving an aerodynamic brick. So if you're looking for a fast car, go buy a fast car because this ain't it. Overall, the 16 valve is a solid upgrade for Suzuki Samurai and I'm really glad I did it. Moving forward, I do want to get a few other comparisons of maybe some 1.3s that have been built, maybe an 8 valve, and get a real accurate idea of where the power lies and what it might be the best option. Um, but for now, for me, I think this was the right option for me to do for my car, my skill level, and my build. And also, to the 16 valve owners already, if I forgot something, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you.